Hello everyone, and welcome to the 29th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can write a string of text to some file on our hard drive, and then how we can read that information back into our program. So basically, um, if you were around for the C tutorials, or if you've watched the C tutorials, then um, you know that I covered basically simple read and write functionality for uh, in C. And if you remember that tutorial, I covered how we can work with file paths as well. And um, so you might already be familiar with this, but I'll show you a little bit about file paths again in this tutorial. So anyway, let's just go ahead and try to start this out. So what we want to do, of course, is write some string of text to some location. So, of course, we need those two things. So the first being our information that we want to save. So we'll just call this some text. And we will save this, I don't know, just call uh, some text we want to save in a file. Okay, so now we have the text that we're going to be saving, and now we just have to figure out the location of where we want to save this. This is usually considered the file path. So now, a uh, little bit about how file paths work, or paths work in general, on your Mac. So, uh, with all Unix systems, or Mac OS X, which is based off of Unix anyway, um, basically there's a very similar way, or it's the same way, of accessing files with file paths. So essentially, um, I'm just going to show you a few ways here. If we want to be talking about the very root or the top uh, top level of our hard drive, what we can do is simply say a slash, and now we are located on the top of our hard drive, where where all the location or all the information is saved, basically. So if we want to say uh, that, and then we can just say mytext.txt, this would be saving a text file on the very top level of our hard drive. So what I mean by this is if we hop over to the finder here. Basically, if we're on the very top level of our system, where, as you can see here, we're right in Macintosh HD. On the very top level, you got all the main folders, your system folder, and users folder, etc. So this is the very top level, and I've probably said that 50 times already, but you get the idea. So if we wanted to uh, dig deeper into this, now that we've now that we're on that top level, we could say, well, I want to put this in my users folder, and so this would basically mean into the top level of our system, users folder, and then, you know, whatever inside the users folder we would be saving this text. So anytime you want to go into another folder, you just basically specify the folder name with another slash to represent that you're in a folder. So that would effectively save this right in our users folder in this right here. So if we were to do, uh, let's say we wanted to save this in the same location where our program is run, and we can usually or easily do that simply by just saying this. And if we were just to say mytext.txt, this would save it in the same location where our um, actual program is run. So if we want to actually get this location, we can right click on our products menu or where our lesson, our program is actually located, and we just say right click, show in finder, and a finder window will pop up uh, giving the location of where our program is located. So with that, if we wanted to save it in the exact same directory of where our program is located, we could simply uh, leave our text just like this, and that would uh, save the text right there. We can alternately just say uh, dot slash, and that also just represents the relative path, again, where our program is essentially being run. So with that, there's one last thing that we can learn about, and that is the parent directory. And if we want to work with uh, the level just above where we're located, so this is just like the folder outside of where you are. So if you were talking about our documents folder, then um, if we went into our documents folder and you wanted to save something there, um, then you could be you know, saving in your documents folder. But if you want to get above the documents folder or outside of the documents folder, you could use the parent directory, which is used by two dots and then a slash. So, for example, if we are in our Lesson 12 folder right here, or where our program is located, by using the two dots and a slash, we are effectively going up one level in the hierarchy. So we'd be going back a folder, 
and now we would be in this folder, which is our products folder. And then if we wanted to go back down, then we could go into the debug menu or debug folder, and that's where our program is located. But you get the idea. The parent directory is just the level above where we are right now. So that's what two dots and a slash uh, effectively do. So anyway, uh, that's that, and uh, you can add as many of these as you want, and this will just effectively keep going up in the level that you're on. So let's just go ahead and save our path as um, just this root directory and my text. And again, this will save your information right on top of your hard drive uh, like so. So with this, let's figure out now how we can write this information to this file path. And we can do this by a simple, just one method. So we can do this by just saying some text, and that's just the text we want to save. And we want to say write write to file atomically encoding error and that's just the long method name that we have for this and of course all the parameters so it looks a little more complicated than it is so I'm gonna just explain what all these things mean so write to file is just asking for the path uh, location or wherever we want to save this so writing to the file location so we can just pass in our path uh, variable that we had above, and of course this will just effectively write to that file. Now, write to file, if there's already a file in that path, so if we had mytext.txt already in our hard drive, it would replace it, and if we did not, it would simply create a new file there with our uh, extension that we give it. So that's a simple thing for that uh, parameter. The next one is atomically, and basically for this, there's two options. Since it's a bool, we either want yes or no. And for most of the time, you're going to want to say yes. And what atomically basically does is if you specify yes for this, it will create a temporary file before overriding the previous one. So it sounds like kind of more work than it needs to do, but um, basically if something goes wrong, while you're trying to save, I don't know what could happen, maybe you have a power failure or whatever happens, kernel panic, I have no idea what could possibly happen uh, in between this, but basically if you want to be very safe with saving this file, saying that you're going to write this atomically, or yes, then you are basically saying you're going to write to a temporary file before overriding the old one, which would uh, basically mean that nothing could go wrong in the saving process. So once it's effectively saved in that temporary file, it will override it. If you said atomically no, it would try to change that actual file, and if something goes wrong in the process, you could end up with a corrupted file. So anyway, for the most part, we just want to say yes. Okay, so this the third part now is simply the encoding, and I'll talk a little bit about this, but not too much, because it is kind of a complicated topic. But anyway, NSUTF-8 string encoding is just what we want to put in here. And you can look up UTF encoding if you want. Um, there's a huge history behind how text encoding became part of, you know, how we actually put text into our computer. Um, it, it was a huge thing back in who knows when, but there was no real standard on how we were supposed to save text. But then we came up with basically a Unicode uh, text encoding. And that's what we have here. So just say NSUDF8 string encoding, and this will work for all your standard English language, um, you know, non-special characters. So anything that you can basically type on an English keyboard, uh, even like stuff with, um, you know, the C with the Cedilla, I think it's called, uh, you can put those in it as well. Basically standard um, characters that you can put on with uh, your keyboard. So anyway, uh, most things are covered by NSUTF-8 string coding, and um, you can experiment with different encodings, but for the most part, you just want to say NSUTF-8 string encoding. So now, with the error, we don't have to worry about this. We're going to assume that there will be no error because we know what we're doing. So anyway, uh, we can leave the error part out of it. So now, once we've done this, we effectively have said to our computer basically or our program where we want to save this and all the specified information. So we can go ahead and run this and when it's done you can go to your finder and you can see that right on the top level on your Macintosh hard drive we have mytext.txt. 
And if we go to quick look this, you can see that we have some text we want to save in a file. And that's what um, we wanted to save. That was the text information that we put in our NS string. So now we can try a few other things here if we want. Um, we can also read this information back. So to do this, we can just make another NS string variable, and this will be our new text. And all we have to do for this is use the class method and a string and string with contents tense of file and there's this is actually a deprecated method so you can't use this but what we want to use is uh, string with contents of file encoding error so basically what we have here is it's uh, just three simple parameters what we're asking for of course is the uh, where this content or where the file location is again asking for the path so we can just pass in our path variable and that's all it's asking for where the file is located again encoding is just the encoding that we used and this is important to keep the exact same encoding that we made the file with so anyway that's um, just put in the same encoding for that and then for the error we are assuming again that there shouldn't be any errors with this so we can just put in null so now that we've done all that, we can simply nslog this string because we should have a uh, fully functioning string. So we can go ahead and put in new text as the object for our nslog. So go ahead and run this. And you can see now in our console we get some text we want to save in a file. And this isn't uh, from what we created right here, this is completely reading it off the uh, path location where we created our file earlier. So now I'll just show you also um, writing this file to other locations. If we wanted to save this file in the same directory as where this um, actual program is located, we can simply do this by dropping that uh, first slash, and now this will save this file in our same the same directory that we're in. So we can go ahead into our finder here, and as you can see now in our uh, folder, we have our mytext.txt. So now let's say that we want to save this in the file right above, which is our products folder in this case. And again, to do that, all we have to do is say dot dot slash, and that will just bring us up one level in the hierarchy. So we can go ahead and run this. And if we go to check this in the finder, you can see that now we have our mytext.txt. And we can open this in text edit if we want, and you know, you can do whatever you want with it. So anyway, that's um, basic, you know, simple, just uh, writing a string of text to some file on your hard drive. Pretty simple operation and not too much to it. Uh, most part just comes down to file paths and uh, the string encoding that you use. So anyway, um, if you are having troubles with this, you may want to try a UTF-32. Uh, I'm not really, I'm not, you know, 100% sure on what different string encodings are required for, um, you know, different, if you're in like China or something, you might have to use a different string encoding because I'm not really sure how the lettering system works. But anyway, you get my point. Um, but for most of you, you should be safe by using NSUDF8. You can check out some of the other uh, encodings in the documentation as well. But you could probably try NSUDF32 and that should work as well. So anyway, uh, that's all I really want to show you for this tutorial. Simple saving a string of text to a file. And all we had to do was specify our location, uh, just you know, get the text that we want to put in, and then do the simple method of writing and reading our file. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed lesson 29 and a more uh, a lot more of these tutorials about saving information will be coming up. Not so much just writing a text to a file, but we're going to get into a few more things with property lists and uh, many other saving techniques as well for saving data. So anyway, that's what uh, the coming tutorials are going to be. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. You can leave your comments in or your questions in the comments below, and I'll see you next tutorial.